The everyday situation of migrants in the European Union is one of the shameful proofs of the failure of this translation concept. So what about the translation concept in other disciplines? As we know, the notion of translation is used quite extensively in other disciplines. Let me take the example of sociology, which is our topic now. Giselle Sapiro, Johann Heilbronn and others of the group, for instance, perceive of translation as a concept anchored in hermeneutics or, at the best, in cultural studies, which they definitively release from these tight boundaries and enlighten it through their approach of international exchange mechanisms. Their work might be innovative for sociology or for the sociology of literature, but not for translation studies, as for them, translation is primarily a corpus to be analyzed. Other sociologists better appreciate what has been going on in translation studies, like Ulf Wugenick from Lüneberg University. He delivered a fascinating study on the translation of pictures and discusses the covers of a series of translations of Bourdieu's La Distinction. He combines methodologies from sociology, visual arts, and translation studies, even if the latter still widely follows a loss and gain imperative. In general, however, we can say that the translation concept used in other disciplines is not a dynamic one which corresponds to social developments, and most scholars do not take into account translation studies, as I said before. I agree with Michael Cronin, who points out that the frequent use of translation as a metaphor is often accompanied by a lack of engagement with existing work in translation studies. Perhaps, he argues, this is particularly due to the nomadic nature of the discipline. And I quote, it is not just the translating subjects of the discipline that are engaged in a nomadic practice as they translate, the discipline itself is nomadic in its disciplinary journeying from subject area to subject area." End of quote. So um, which consequences can we draw from this representation of the translation concept? I think that what is really needed is a series of publications and a sort of uh, uh, coming up with the under-theorization of uh, the translation concept in its broader sense, and it sh this should be pro publications which conceive of recent developments in the discussion of the notion of translation from a translation studies perspective, and which would sharpen the notion for better involving theoretical discussions on this category. And only, I think, on the basis of this, we can allow the scientific community to take notice or better notice of what is going on in translation studies. So which are the implications of these reflections on methodologies or on research training programs? Once we take account of these two set of problems, a better socio-political orientation of research and a redefinition of translation concepts, which of course are linked to each other, the question arises which methodologies we need to tackle these challenges. First, we have the political implications of translators and interpreters' training. On the basis of a more critical approach to socio-political issues and their relevance for translation, we need a more explicit education for our students in the political implications of our job. And sorry to be so direct, but we should not leave this field to Mona Baker and moreover have the issue reduced to narratives. See, for instance, the discussion on translation and interpreting in the context of the Iraq war. We need more engagement with political scientists and more courage to openly discuss and take position in terms of research in the stricter sense and in public. In more concrete terms, I would suggest to encourage more detailed studies on the translatorial habitus in its very broad sense. 
there is still a lot to be done in terms of analytical studies on this issue. How is the habitus of translators or interpreters made up? What differences are there in the various labor settings and what do we learn from the historical makeups of the translatorial habitus? Despite the critical assessment of, for example, Laia's habitus concept, um, habitus could help shed light on the factors conditioning the translator's socialization in the professional field and foreground the great variety of translators' dispositions in order to allow for crucial insights into the decisions taken during the translation procedure and simultaneously deepen the understanding of the social relevance and responsibility of the agents participating in the translation process. Um, we also need more theoretically oriented works, not only in order to be taken more seriously by neighboring disciplines, but especially to deliver firm theoretical frameworks for the development of methodological tools. And we should insert translation methodology into studies which claim to deal with translational categories, but do not. I think of sociological studies like those of, for example, Giselle Sapiro and her group. In addition, the analysis of translation flows between cultures are an important basis for more complex studies on the nature of the relationships between cultures. They help to better understand in which ways cultures interact and would broaden or view our view on the exchange mechanisms underlying these flows. Such data are needed for more detailed analysis and a deeper comprehension on the factors which condition the exchange mechanisms between cultures. But we need statistical and sociological methodologies in order to get results which are a professional basis for further studies. Johann Heilbronn, for example, sees such translation flows as part of broader globalization processes, which of course is very much true. His sociologically oriented definition of translation goes as follows. He says, from a sociological perspective, translations are a function of the social relations between language groups and their transformation over time. He suggests the exploration of the interrelations between international translation systems and the examination of the translation practices underlying these translation systems by taking into account the social dynamics of their circulation mechanisms. Last but not least, it is my claim that we need less single case studies, but I would rather advocate large scale studies such as the one on the connection of visual arts and translation sociology I mentioned above. They could help better understand broader contexts and could be at the basis of comparative studies which would help to better identify the role of translation in a society in a given time. In addition, it would foster in disciplinary, interdisciplinary work and involve methodologies which are not primarily grounded in one specific discipline. In the light of the broadened or better redefined responsibility I mentioned above, I would, pref I would also argue in favor of a more explicit inclusion of topics like migration and translation or exile and translation. So these are just some preliminary thoughts on the future of sociological approaches in translation studies, and I'm eager to know what your suggestions are. Thank you.